Hey guys, uh, can you hear me? Praveen, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Uh, yeah, great. Um, I'm not sure like when would be a good time to get started I and mean, how long do we wait? Uh, Praveen, can you can you just give us a go ahead and I'll I'll get started. Are you there? Hello. All right. Uh, let's just wait for a couple more minutes. Maybe. Yeah, I can I can see someone raising a hand. Yeah, yeah, sort of. All right, guys. So uh, let's just wait out for a couple more minutes, and uh, then we can get started uh, with the classes. Uh, for those who can uh, keep your videos on, would be nice. If 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 not, that's not going to be an issue either. But uh, yeah, if you can keep that on, I'd rather prefer you guys to do that. All right, while uh, probably more people join, um, let me just give you a brief background, a brief introduction about myself. So my name is Praveen, uh, different from the Praveen that you guys know. Uh, we got started with this thing uh, together at, at some point of time. And uh, to get started about this financial modeling course, uh, so basically, I've tried to structure it in a different way. Uh, let, for for a little more further introduction about myself, so I work uh, in a in a hedge fund. So building models is something that uh, you know is something I probably do day in day out. And uh, this time around, I'm doing a little different. I'm, I'm putting in a little different approach in terms of how we are going to give, go about building a model because uh, it's. Like if, if, if you guys want to just see how a model is built, you, you'd rather go into YouTube, right? I mean, it's, it's, un, it's, it's free of course. And building a model isn't exactly the thing that, uh, our end goal should be here. Our end goal is to be able to understand like, uh, why do we need to build a model and what are the meticulous behind it? So, uh, let's let's get rolling now guys uh just to get started like just a very simple plain question and there's no wrong or right answer for obvious reasons and to give a little more perspective to this particular class this is going to be an interactive uh, session here uh mostly we're just gonna you know get started i'm not probably even gonna touch the excel today uh it's more gonna be of the sorts where i'm gonna give you uh, a background about what a model is why we build a model how we are going to uh, go about this particular uh, model building course and over the next class we can you know proceed ahead and uh, build build a model so can can someone tell me like why do we build a model i i saw someone who had turned on his video uh, i think ravinder or whoever it was uh, i mean anyone please uh, there's like i said there's no right or wrong answer over here just give it a shot like why do you think we build a model or what 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 is what what is a financial model you can raise your hands you can go ahead without raising your hands just at least you know some sort of uh, active participation from you you guys would uh, really make this session interesting anyone yeah 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 sumita please go ahead Sumeda, Kavya, uh, Sumeda, yeah. So to forecast something, uh, maybe it's profit and to take the decision accordingly. Yeah, that's 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 one aspect of it. Uh, I think Kavya was the next one. Do you, do you have anything to add? Sir, uh, we uh, may require the financial model to understand uh, that what uh, the situation of the business in our company and so that we can take the further decisions uh yeah that's 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 totally correct all right so models are built in two different ways right first is a model that a company is going to build for itself to make a projection to understand how they want to go about uh in the future and then there are analyst models which people like us build 
so company model is like uh, they project things they try to build a model so as to put into perspective what are the things that they want to achieve let's say i am coca cola right uh, i would have certain projections at the back of my mind i would want to have a certain growth rate that i would want to achieve there would be a set, certain revenue run rate etc that uh, you know would be uh, uh, you know at at the back of the mind of the people at senior management that they would want to achieve the management wants to achieve certain goals and in order to make sure that those goals are aligned and we have a proper picture we have a proper understanding of what where we stand and where we want to go we build that model every quarter the results you know they they obviously come for every company and then you can basically understand where you to actually stand in terms of uh, being able to deliver so that is a model that a company builds uh and the reason for that is to uh, uh like kind of have a understanding of where we are where we want to be and to be able to uh bridge whenever there is a gap another model which we analysts build is uh basically to get a understanding or to you know get a gist of whether or not we want to go ahead and buy a particular company or whether we want to sell a particular company uh, where does it stand and it's 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 not just you know just to get a financial high or something uh, th- th- there are utilities behind a model uh, that goes beyond those uh, financial highs and uh, so model building comes later but before model building we need to be able to understand like qualitatively where does the company stand whenever we are going on about let's say let's say i'm i'm and uh, just to make it clear i'm going to be working on a model from an analyst's perspective uh, the reason behind that being quite uh, fair and simple i'm an analyst myself and uh, you guys also probably would want to understand different companies at a particular point of time right so an analyst model would be different from a company's model companies model is something that we're not going to look at because for obvious reasons they would have a very rosy picture about themselves right they i mean no matter what you always think that your profits are going to go up your revenues are going to go up that you are going to be able to achieve what you have committed but as an analyst you have got to be a little more uh, let's just say succinct about whether or not those things that management has said are actually achievable or not so from that perspective uh, the model building is to be able to understand to be able to gauge whether or not we want to invest in a particular company let's keep it that simple although there are multiple utilities uh, but that is our end goal is what i would say uh, having said that now whether or not uh, we want to go ahead and buy a particular uh, yeah uh, ravinder please uh, do you have a question uh, sorry, no no about oh okay uh yeah and, and at any point of time you guys have a question feel free to raise a hand or feel free to just go ahead and you know we'll, we'll get that address and thanks thanks keshav as well uh for turning on your camera so yeah that is where we stand so i am going to go on about showing you a particular uh company for which i had built a model the model was built and the end goal for that model was to understand whether or not i, I want to buy this particular company so let me just share with you a research uh, report that i had prepared quite a while back uh, just give me a second uh let me know if you guys can see it uh is it is it is it visible yeah it is visible. yes yeah yeah perfect uh so as you can see the company its its name is billasoft uh i am not sure how many of you guys are aware or you guys know of this company and as you can see it was it was built quite a while back it was like you know 30th july 2021 so more than 6 7 months back at that point of time i had uh, uh at at 401 rupee i had a buy uh call on it like call as in this was this was my personal call this is not a buy or sell recommendation over here uh as you can see here the disclaimer this is a personal view and uh, yeah those those disclaimers become very necessary when you are you know working on stuff like this so uh let me just give you a brief picture about what this company is this is the company for which we are going to build a model eventually 
and uh, uh, yeah, nobody's been there. So th at at the end of this this particular session, or at the end of you know this entire course, you guys should be able to understand a particular company, and with that understanding, build a model. It's not just going to be like you know a simple exercise wherein you have an Excel in hand and you just uh, connect those dots, uh, like link everything here and there. That is something that that comes uh, with practice. That is not our end goal. Our end goal is to be able to understand, like, why uh, do we need to build a particular model? And before building a model, our end goal is to be able to identify attractive companies, right? Attractive companies are the ones which are valued uh, attractively. Where I mean, you would only invest in a company if you think you're going to be able to make money out of it. And you might want to short sell it if you think it is overvalued and you know it's going to go down. So whatever be the case, you need to first understand the company. Number one, number two is going to be, you should be able to understand the business. Number three, what are the growth prospects? Number four is going to be like, uh, how, how good is the management that becomes extremely important because it's ultimately the management, which, you know, ends up driving the business. And number five is their capabilities, like how they have fared in the past, what changes are they putting in right now? And do they have the ability to be able to you know deliver on what they promise because for obvious reasons all the companies you know promise very well i mean there's there's no doubt about the fact that no company is going to come on board on a con call and going to say you know next year we are going to go down by 10 percent in revenues and uh, our margins are going to go down we are not going to be able to perform well i mean that's that's never the case everyone thinks bright about themselves it's for us to be able to analyze whether or not that's the case uh, so having said that, I'll just give you a very brief introduction about uh, this particular company and we'll build this, you know, we'll rebuild this model because it was quite a while back that I built it at 401. It, it gave me a very good high because it reached 600 odd levels. And then now it is back to 430s, 430, 435, 440 odd levels. So it will be a good exercise to understand whether or not, you know, anything has changed fundamentally in the company uh whether or not uh, we should uh, consider you know bringing any 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 sort of change in this particular company has thing have fundamentals changed does it still uh, look attractive is it only because of uh you know the things changing in the background and stuff like that so birla soft this is a company uh, which is engaged in enterprise uh, digital solution uh, providing now what that means is uh, you guys are aware of, uh, companies going into cloud, right? So can, can someone explain like what, what happens when a company goes into cloud and why, why at all would a company want to go into, you know, cloud instead of having their own, uh, website, just, just a business related, uh, general question. Come on guys. I mean. I think it's a, it's a, it's a fairly simple question. Why let's say you have a website, why would you want to have it on cloud instead of having your own, uh, uh, website being built? So that, uh, more number of people can for, for uh, the visibility, visibility, you know, in a way it's, it, it might be true. It might not be true. So l let me just, uh, tell you one thing. Uh, do you, have, do you guys, uh, I mean, I am pretty sure a lot of you guys must be doing it uh do you guys buy stuff online have you have you have you, have you guys ever purchased anything from amazon yeah yes yeah. yes right and do you think do you think uh there uh, uh let's just say the availability or let's just say the utility of the website remains same across like there are times when they have sale right at that particular point of time when uh amazon goes on sale don't you think that there will be a lot of people who would be visiting that particular site and uh, uh, there'll be a lot more demand at, at that particular point in time. That's, that's true, right? So what happens when you go on a cloud versus having your own website is, uh, you might be aware that there are a lot of, uh, you know, these companies, these sites that keep crashing. I mean, in, in a lot of cases, your exam results, the day it's released, you're not able to, uh, get, get the results right on time. Right. And it becomes very frustrating because like uh, you, you, you guys don't even know what has happened and it's, it's something happening in the background. Your friends are getting the results, but you're not able to view it. The reason behind that is that 
once you have let's say your own website there is a certain amount of uh, uh, you know uh, load that it can particularly take but this particular thing this particular issue gets resolved once you go on a cloud because wahan pe sab cheez everything there is on a shared basis so let's say a uh, your your company if it is on cloud and you are going on a sale there won't be an issue if on those sale days there are there's a you know extremely high traffic because since it is on cloud and it is on a shared basis it has that bandwidth to be able to adjust accordingly so on low days it will be use, utilizing lower on higher days it will be give, it will be able to give you that higher bandwidth so that bandwidth issue gets resolved and uh, the cost from a cost perspective it makes a lot of sense because again it's about the bandwidth you ca- you can keep your bandwidth for let's say 1000 visits per day but on an average it's just 100 it's just on the sale days that it goes to 1000 so it doesn't make sense for you to pay 1000 for every day right so that is one of the biggest uh you know utilities that uh, uh this particular company provides in the way that they help the new age companies and some old age companies as well to get to cloud migration which is which is like the biggest uh, uh source of revenue or biggest uh jump for uh, them let's let's just put it that way uh having said that uh, the company it was established you know back in 1990s and it was into traditional business the traditional business for uh, them uh, used to be let me just come down here enterprise solution provision which was basically erp implementation uh, a lot of companies have those erp right ki uh, the traditional model which i basically told you guys about so a lot of companies used to have the traditional model and that is what they used to uh, you know uh, help those companies with have built their own websites uh, have their own internal systems in place and everything from there they realized that you know over time things are changing quite rapidly and as a result of that uh, the you know they they've kind of shifted a lot to business and technology transformation and this is where as you can see as a percentage of revenues uh, this is for the last few quarters this has drastically been reducing on the enterprise solution part because this business is dying and on the other hand the business is growing uh, for business and technology transformation which is their meat and which is where their focus lies now the investment thesis the reason uh, why i thought that it was a good company to invest in at that particular point of time uh, these are a few pointers and i would definitely recommend you guys to you know uh, go through the stuff the material that i'm going to provide you guys uh, with just go through those stuff try and identify try and understand this company really well before we build a model for this company because unless you understand what the company is and what the company is doing you can just uh, build a model for financial high like i said before but that is not going to be of any utility because it's it's like you can you can go ahead build models you can build 100 models right but unless it's really going to help you guys in understanding like why we are building a model and what utility is providing it's not going to be of any use so uh, a few investment thesis for me was that you know uh, they had given a commitment that you know they want to reach uh, 1 billion dollar in terms of revenues by 2025 and year on year every quarter once you know i saw the company for a few quarters you could also go back and see how their revenue run rate has been like and despite covid you know they were able to kind of uh, achieve those smaller targets in order to be able to reach to their end goal of being a, a 1 billion dollar company in 2025 now whether or not that ends up materializing is not something in our hands but you know that is something you know they have a fixed target in front of them and they're working towards it so that is what makes uh, the company uh, really interesting next thing is that they are creating a micro niche they are not focusing on you know it's not like they are working with every sort of companies their core uh, uh, this thing their core focus lies in bfsi life science automotive and retail and even in terms of bfsi they were able to save uh, around 94 million in terms of uh, revenue leak for a, a very high profile company 
although the name of that company was never released but uh, based on my understanding i think it was barclays bank so and and they got repeat orders from those customers so the thing is you're helping a particular company and uh, you're able to deliver on you know building in, in terms of doing good work for them that kind of creates word of mouth and you're getting repeat repeat orders from those particular people so that kind of uh, makes the business again very interesting the third point was that their share of annuity revenues uh, have gone up significantly uh, now this particular thing annuity revenue i mean you guys are actual students and here i would definitely want you guys to uh, chime in and let me know like what do you think annuity revenues would be come on someone like what 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 do you well, as a layman if i were to tell you what is uh, that you know this this is my annuity revenue what what would you think of it annual profit revenue generated annually yes that is correct so annuity in the sense uh, have you have you guys gone through the uh, i don't know what the current cm1 or something where you guys have the annuity models right wherein you have like a stream of cash flows coming in and you discount that to be able to understand like what is the present value uh, are are we guys on the same page those you know stream of cash flows we discount that and then uh, we kind of get the npv of that company or or of that project yes sir so annuity revenues is basically the their uh, share of their share of revenues which is uh, you know repeating in nature it's not just one time job like you can have two sort of businesses right you work with a particular company there is a particular project that you work on you complete that let's say cloud migration is something that i'm doing for a company named xyz i complete that i get my share of fees and the relationship is closed the second is that they give me a sort of an order wherein i work for them for 5 to 10 years straight for the next 10 years i will help several divisions of that particular company to do different uh, sort of things and they will be paying me on an annual basis uh, for for doing that work now for a company what would you think would be more profitable or, or more attractive an annuity sort of a uh, cash flow or just a one time cash flow annuity cash flows right because there the visibility uh, goes on uh, significantly higher i'm like sure that you know there is a commitment from my customer my client who has said that he will give me a uh, 100 rupees or 200 rupees i'm i'm just taking random numbers over here 100 rupees for the next 10 years so if 70% of my revenues right now are annuity in nature it gives me a confidence that jo cash flows the cash flows which we will be discounting later on the dcf model which we will be building uh, where we will have those stream of cash flows year 1 let's say the cash flow is 100 million year 2 let's say the cash flow is 200 million 3 300 million 400 million and so on and so forth i get more confidence when those are annuity in nature because then i'm sure that those revenues are actually going to accrue so this is where one of the transformations happened for this company because earlier when they were into erp solution providing this was like for a, for my client i'll build that sap once i build that sap the relationship is complete i get my money back and and you know it's 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 over um, i get the money and uh, that that client is no longer a client to me in turn what they have done now is they have converted uh, their revenues to a stream where around 70% of the money is annuity in nature so it will come every year which increases the visibility of the uh, future cash flows now these are the few matrices that becomes very interesting uh, before you know you particularly analyze the company so i have just put in a few uh, estimates for you know the uh, upcoming year which was fy22 and i had built the model a while back so right now if i were to build it i would have 23 24 numbers over there as well the estimates so i just want 
to understand like how much do you understand about a uh, price to earnings ratio can anyone tell me what a pe ratio stands for um like you guys come from finance background right commerce background i i i i really hope that you would at least know what a pe ratio is because otherwise we'll have to go back to the basics cover that up and then uh, come back and you know try and uh, finish this up so if you guys want me to explain pe ratio i can do that but i really hope that you guys know this it is basically uh, like the company's earnings per share like uh एक शेयर पे कितना ऑन कितना exactly 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 that's that's correct so let's say the PE ratio here as you can see is thirty five the share price at the time when I built the thing was four hundred and one so their earnings their share price divided by earnings is thirty five point five which means for every rupee that they're earning I'm willing to pay thirty five times now let's take a classic example of a bank you put your money in the bank let's say you put 100 rupees in the bank uh, they'll pay you an interest of i don't know it's it's gone considerably low these days let's say 3 which means the multiple there is 33 times right because you put in 100 rupees you get 3 rupees back so you are willing to pay 33 times your earnings to the bank so that you can make those earnings now for uh companies this should signify this should be higher if you expect that the growth rate for that company would be high right and if you expect that the growth rate is low let's say for companies like uh i don't know ongc or all those psus which don't quite grow very fast there the price to earnings multiple eventually you know ends up getting very low because growth nahi hai so for obvious reasons you are not going to be paying them very high uh price to book value on the other hand is on the similar lines price to book value is your total price divided by book value of a share book value is nothing but uh total equity that the company has divided by the number of shares so price to book value although it's 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 a metric that was used sometime in the past uh i don't know how much of you are aware so benjamin graham was the one who used to use it a lot he used to do something that he termed as cigar butt investing so what a cigar butt investor does is he would find companies which are trading at less than their book value let's say my company is worth 100 in the books and in the market it is trading at 95 so you think that you know there is a there is a clear arbitrage here ki so 100 uh, worth of uh, something is getting sold at 95 so you buy it at 95 and uh, when it goes to 100 or let's say even higher you sell it off so back then during benjamin graham's time and you know when warren buffett early on he got started with uh, his investing career cigar butt investing worked wonders for him like he he was able to make 30 35% cagr return just by identifying companies which were trading at less than their book value and this isn't something that happens today as you can see this you know the company we are looking at is trading five times its book value so on the books if you look at birla soft it's worth let's say 100 on the market it's trading at 500 so there must be a reason why people are willing to pay five times what it is uh worth on the books right and the reason behind that is very simple that is brand because brand ki value is not something which is put into the uh, uh books of accounts this is going to be something similar to nestle or anyone else let's let's say i give you enough money that nestle has on its book and you have enough capabilities to be able to build whatever nestle is building like they're making chocolates they're making all those uh, baby foods and material everything i i give you enough capital exactly the same amount of capital that nestle has you build a company named xyz and do the same stuff do you think you will be able to achieve what nestle is achieving no right it's it's pretty obvious that you won't be able to achieve that and the reason being quite simple that there is a brand value associated with nestle uh and for that brand value they are getting paid so that being the reason price to book value is something which is more important for something like a financial company and why is it important for financial companies something we will discuss 
uh, in in the later stages but this isn't a very relevant metric it's just something that you should have a look at like it, it should not be something out of the box like you know the company is worth one and it is trading at 100 because then it becomes a questionable thing like okay why 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 am i paying 100 times what it is worth in the books so there has to be some uh, very good reasoning behind that the third and the most important multiple which you guys should be able to understand is ev to ebitda multiple and right now what we are going to do is we are going to understand what an enterprise value is what ebitda is and make 100 percent sure that you know you guys understand ev and ebitda before uh, the wrap of this session all right so can anyone tell me what ev is what ev stands for enterprise value and uh, does anyone have any idea about what enterprise value is come on anyone Oh, okay, let's not get into enterprise value. Can someone tell me what is equity value? The value of equity. How how would you know what is the value of equity of a particular company? Share price of the uh, company into all the number of shares. Correct, correct. That's as simple as that. And I mean, it's it's written over here. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's it's listed. If it's a listed company, you know what the value of equity is. Because you just go to the market, you see what what its current uh, uh, market cap is, and then you know what the value of equity is. So, in a way, when when we are working with a PE multiple, right? This particular PE multiple, what we are essentially doing is we are dividing the total market cap of the company by the total profit of the company. Do you guys agree or not? So, price to earnings is market price per share divided by earnings per share instead of per share i am taking market value of the company and dividing it by the total earnings right so wo per share per share is again getting multiplied and this gives me a price to earnings multiple now this is the favorite multiple of a lot of people because it is very simple to understand it's like like i said for a bank it's a three point uh, it's it's a 33 times multiple for someone else it could be something else and uh, you basically get a very simple approach towards you know how much times you are paying for what earnings they are making but there is a very big flaw in terms of price to earnings multiple in the sense that it is very succinct it is very you know uh, let's just put it this way that for accounting changes or for any sort of tax changes any sort of uh, regulatory changes two companies with similar uh, capital structure with similar uh, profitability uh, and with similar you know uh, everything the pe multiple could change so let's just have a look at it uh, let's say there's a company x and then there's a company called y uh, their sales are let's say 1000 each um the cost of goods sold is let's say 500 for each of them now the change is that this is my gross profit now less interest cost let's say one company is using interest uh, basically using leverage uh, debt on their balance sheet uh, in order to generate greater profitability for their shareholders while the other company is not so the uh, profits ultimately end up being 400 for the company which is using debt just a second and it is 500 for a company which is using totally uh, you know equity as a result of this you would see that since the uh, profits have fluctuated the PE multiples for obvious reasons could go up or down right but at the same time it doesn't mean that company X is different from company Y it's just their capital structure which is different 
at the same time it could also be the case that company x is in india while company y is in singapore as a result of which taxes in india we have around 33% as tax so this will be just a second this will be minus this into 0.33 while in case of singapore the corporate tax let's say is just 15% now all of a sudden the same company which is delivering you know similar gross profit which is doing exactly the same thing just because they are in two different jurisdictions start looking very different in terms of profitability because of the kind of taxes that they are paying so stuff like interest costs stuff like taxes make a huge impact in terms of uh you know what uh uh the what what uh this company is able to uh, deliver oh i'm i'm really sorry i was sharing something else just just give me a second i'll share i'll share the excel Come on, guys! You should let me know that I wasn't sharing the Excel. So this is this is this is the calculations for company X. The sales is X and Y. The sales remain thousand. The cost of goods sold remain five hundred. The go the gross profit for obvious reasons will be some will be exactly the same uh, for both the companies. Now, just because one company is using leverage, the profitability goes for a toss, but it generates more uh, income, let's say, or more revenues for shareholders because. the shareholders give lesser equity now just because company x is in india and it is paying higher taxes the uh, total tax is lower while just because the company is in singapore and it pays lower taxes the tax goes higher so as an analyst you have to look at the company from a perspective uh, from you know you have to look at a company before all of these happens because these things can change this does not give a true picture of what the company is doing this is a result of their capital structure this is a result of uh you know regulatory changes which 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 can change at any point of time right so the reason why ebitda becomes very important is that it comes before all of this the full form of ebitda is earnings before interest taxes and depreciation and amortization of course so what we look at is the what, what like what is the company basically able to earn before they have paid any sort of taxes any sort of interest any sort of depreciation amortization as a result of this all the uh, you know uh, let's just call it uh, flaws or let's just call it uh, differences which accrue as a result of different accounting policies a company x could have higher cost of goods sold if they depreciate their assets at a higher rate while company y would have a lower uh, cost of goods sold if they depreciate their assets at a lower rate but that should not be the reason why we end up saying that you know company y is better because it has more profits because that's not truly the case at some point of time in future they will have to show greater depreciation than company x because assets are being utilized in a similar way i'm just assuming that you know x and y are the same companies so we have to look at the company before all of these accounting mitigities all of these taxes related mitigities all of these you know capital structure related mitigities come into picture and that's where ebitda comes into play now the next thing is enterprise value so like i said that ebitda is the earnings for the company that comes before taxes interest depreciation amortization so this is the profits that is earned by the entire enterprise now what an enterprise stands for is it's it's not just the equity holders money right since i have not deducted interest cost like it is earnings before interest and taxes this money this 
income accrues not just to the equity shareholders but it also accrues to the debt shareholders uh, debt holders or not not debt shareholders but debt holders so what an enterprise value basically stands for is the value of the total company like it's not just equity or debt you take up entire source of funding right so let's try to bridge uh, let's try to move from enterprise equity value to enterprise value and uh, you guys will answer what we should be doing with these particular nine items based on the discussion that we have had so far so we have equity value which is let's say 100 how do we get this we get this from the current market capitalization now let's say a company has debt of rupees 50 should this be plus 50 or should this be minus 50 once if if i were to come to enterprise value and why yeah i mean it should be minus 50 why because debt is something which which is outside like which we borrowed that is that is the exact thing you know that is exactly the thing that comes to mind at the first instance and that is the sorry to say that is the incorrect answer the thing should is be, uh, it should be plus because like if uh, enterprise value is basically the total value if i am there to uh, if like for example if i am going to buy that company i'll have to pay for its equity as well as its debt so it will be the total value of the company exactly. equity plus exactly. debt exactly that's 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 exactly correct so are like i hope i mean everyone are you guys on the same page now i am not looking at the equity only i am looking at the entire company i am looking at nestle's balance sheet right now nestle let's say it has a equity value of 100 and it has a debt of 50 on its balance sheet so this entire enterprise would not just be the equity portion it would also encompass the debt portion right because if i am to buy this company mujhe in, i'll have to take their equity in my books i will also have to take their debt in my books this is an obligation the debt is an obligation which i have to pay sometime in the future now because i am taking an obligation which needs to be paid in the future the entire enterprise value would go up by the amount of debt uh, that would be there on the books is there anyone who has any sort of doubt about why we are adding debt here no you can say no <laughs> there's no doubt or you can say yes there's a, there's still any doubt i can i could reclarify like why we are adding debt okay got of okay said i mean that no i think is there's no doubt okay clear perfect great so now let's get to a little trickier part let's say i have cash of 100, cash of 20 in my books should i add this or should i subtract this while coming to the enterprise value subtract that's the correct answer which i wasn't expecting but why this is called the cash is shown in the asset side whereas equity and debt are the liabilities of the company so the net that's value a, that's a, that's a, that's a very smart answer i must give that to you because equity and debt uh, sorry debt uh, equity and debt we added they were on the liability side that is something that we have to pay in the future and uh, a very smart approach towards this and the logical reasoning that i'm going to give behind this is let's say i am buying nestle which has 20 in its books already right they have 100 worth of equity they have 50 worth of debt which makes it 150 now they already have 20 rupees as cash in their books so when i pay them 150 to buy the company i am also getting 20 as cash if i pay 150 and i get 20 as cash what is it that i am paying 130 130 is is that clear why cash is reduced and not added yes i i i hope it's clear yes sir 
okay great so just make sure that you know these pointers are very clear because in terms of building a model these are the base uh these these are like the very very basic things and you must be very very well accustomed to these things now these are the things that you would find anywhere on the balance sheet and stuff uh, okay sure karo so let me just repeat the entire thing once more before i move ahead equity value you guys are all clear right we can get the equity value straight from the market capitalization like a company is listed it has a market capitalization of 11000 crores the equity value is 11000 crores the company also has debt of 5000 crores so i'll add that debt to value the company because if i am buying that company i will have to pay the debt sharehold that the the debt holders or the loan providers at some point of time in the future so that makes it let's say i'm i'm taking the example of birla soft here which will have which had a market capitalization of 11000 crores now assuming they had a debt of 5000 crores as well if i were to buy birla soft these equity shareholders i have a liability of 11000 crores towards them and the debt holders i will have to pay at some point of time in the future which means i have a total obligation of 17000 crore uh, 16000 crores uh, whatever 11 plus 5 16 yeah now again an assumption that the company has cash of let's say 2000 crores in their balance sheet i am paying 16000 crores to acquire this particular company and in return i am getting a company which already has 2000 crores right let's let's just put it this way you are buying a house for 1 crore rupees the house already has 20 lakhs as cash in in their safe so what is it that you are paying for the house 80 lakhs right because 20 lakhs cash is intact inside the company inside the house it is similar to what we are doing with this particular company as well the equity value is something which we know the debt is something which we will know from their balance sheet but since the company already has cash and let's say i'm paying in cash to them and getting back cash it basically means that you know the transaction is getting nullified and as a result of which the enterprise value goes down clear now is it just cash or any other investments any other investment any 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 sort of liquid investment would uh, would be deducted but not investment in fixed assets because fixed assets is again you know it is something which i am paying for i'm not it, going to go and sell the fixed asset right is it investment in another companies investment in another companies it's a very interesting question it like, depends like in these days all of the companies are investing on the startups and all so their investments are outflowing yeah yeah that's that's a, that's a very interesting part here again analyst would have to take his own call what is that particular investment type if that investment is let's say out of the books i've just invested in a company let's say uh, me as a company every company has their own treasury department right because sometimes let's say they have excess cash and they want to make more money out of it so like you rightly said that let's not get into a startup it will get a little clumsy right now let's say that they have invested in uh, so consider no if we consider nokri that i have invested in zomato and pb fintech yeah so yeah this is this would be an example i would take right after i explain this one uh so let's say nestle has invested 100 rupees in britannia that would be deducted because i can sell it off at any point of time this is not a business investment for me and this uh this is a liquid asset right this is as good as cash the reason behind that investment is more important like i said reasoning is more important than you know being able to build these numbers so here it would be deducted and in your case let's say uh, investment in zomato it would not be deducted because the company is valued because it is invested in zomato right the 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 holding company it has it derives its value because it has invested in zomato it cannot sell zomato today in the markets completely and get money out of it so that is the reason why it's a primary investment and that would not be deducted okay 
like think of it in a, in a different way don't think of it as zomato uh, because it would complicate things uh, let's say nestle again i'm going back to nestle has a plant right that plant produces chocolates those chocolates are sold to make money now you are not having that plant to i mean you you don't have that plant so that you know uh some day your competitor comes and says you know this plant looks very nice i want to buy this plant can you sell it to me obvious for obvious reasons they are not going to do that right yes. so this is an integral part of their business whatever is an integral part of the business is never deducted because that is already reflected in the equity value okay now like i said nestle ka value is 100 because it owns that company it i would not be paying them 100 if they didn't own that company but since they have 20s cash already in their books it 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 means like you know i'm i'm uh, 20 in cash or let's say marketable securities or any other sort of small term investment current asset ha uh, any sort of current asset not uh, not all the current assets it won't include stock uh, in trade again because i'm paying for stock in trade but if it is any sort of liquid investment which can be liquidated at any point of time and converted into cash and the reason why you are holding that is you want cash in that case it would be deducted okay is that clear yes all right now let's get to a little more complex item which is a uh, pension obligation now you guys are actuarial students you guys would know better what are pension obligations Come on, Patwari sir won't be very happy if you guys don't answer this one. What is a pension obligation? The cash kept for the payment of pensions. Uh, right. Not 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 exactly that. So what happens in case of financials is, you are right that it has to be paid. and uh, you're right in the sense that uh, you need money to be able to pay those pension obligations pension obligations what 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 really happens behind behind a pension obligation is that let's say you have to pay 100 to your retiring employees uh, as and when they retire and you guys are better equipped in sort of you know valuing those pension obligations i at some point of time used to be but you know i have lost touch so i'm not i'm not going to comment there you guys know better pension obligation is something that does not come into the books of accounts it is something that you actually is model you actually is value and uh, this is something which is you know put in as a note that you know our pension obligations are around 10000 uh, rupees uh, as per actual valuations you estimate what would be the amount that you might have to pay as pension as pensions to your retiring employees but this does not come into the books of accounts because there is no clear amount behind it right you may not know that a person is going to stay there till the age of 60 the obligation only comes in when the person is there till 60 and then he retires and all those stuff so let's say i have a pension obligation of 10 what do you think should happen should this be added or should this be subtracted in in getting to the enterprise value and this is this is the toughest of all if you can get this right you are you are like totally on top of understanding what an equity value is and what an enterprise value is i think we need to add it because it's an obligation to pay in the future exactly it's 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 just like a debt it's as good as debt like at some point of time in future you have to pay for it right now that i have told all of this there's a simple very simple mantra behind getting from equity value to enterprise value anything that you need to pay for in the future in the you know coming times will be added to the equity value to come to the enterprise value because you are valuing your future obligations enterprise value is nothing but the total obligations that a company has 
so anything that needs to be paid in the future anything that does not belong to you should be added anything uh, that belongs to you and can be liquidated at any point of time should be deducted that's that's the simple way to think about it i went into this you know explaining these things so that your concepts are clear like why and how we move from equity value to enterprise value but i i hope that now it is clear right if there is any sort of obligations if there is any sort of payment that i might have to do in the future it will be added if there is anything that i have cash any liquid asset it will be subtracted simple as simple as that now what now can can someone tell me like what is an enterprise value i have calculated the enterprise value as 140 what do you think this number stands for like what is the what is the you know meaning of this number just just give it a random shot if i want to acquire the company i need to pay this amount simple it's as simple as that if you want to acquire this company if you want to buy this company out this is the amount you need to pay that's that's very simple and uh, great like i mean awesome now again for and you know for apples to apples comparison there is this uh multiple called ev to ebitda now again go back and think what is enterprise value this is something that you will have to pay for getting the entire company getting the equity shareholders on board getting the debt providers on board getting the pension obligations on board and getting everything you know at the back of whatever like basically whatever is happening you are acquiring it fully and for that you are paying let's say 140 now the multiple would be ev to ebitda every multiple every multiple that we have would have a apples to apples comparison on top we have enterprise value which is like the full company right so at the bottom we can't have profit after tax because this is after deduction of interest after deduction of taxes after deduction of depreciation and amortization which is accounting change like two companies with different accounting policies would have different depreciation as a result of that we need to find a number which is representative of earnings for the enterprise value of 140 now nestle as an enterprise is 140 and that 140 is earning an ebitda of let's say 10 or 20 whatever and that multiple is going to give me an understanding of what i am paying for the entire company a lot of analysts today prefer to use ev to ebitda as compared to uh price to earnings ratio the reason are you know all all those things that i told you like i don't want to go into naming companies and blaming companies and stuff but uh, there are you know mota bhai's companies and all that which use different sort of depreciation policies as a result of which their earnings are higher than what it should be having said that that becomes a very important a very critical point for analysts to look at ev to ebitda because once you do that whatever accounting gimmicks that the company has played it gets nullified right you're just sales minus cost the direct cost and you get to the ebitda you get the total enterprise value from their books of accounts and that gives you a very straightforward multiple so you know what is the like how many times you are paying to acquire that particular company without any sort of gimmicks that might be played by the management without any sort of regulatory uh challenges let's say that there could be two companies one company could have op- opted for older tax regime one could have opted for newer tax regime the older one would eventually transfer to the newer one right in 5 years time so i don't want to miss out on the company which has which is paying higher taxes right now just because it is paying higher taxes right now in future their earnings will be significantly higher because right now they are paying higher taxes right in future they won't be doing that so these are the uh, you know the points that you should be able to address and understand from an accounting perspective before we go ahead with uh, building a model now 
let me show you what a bad model looks like bad in the sense like this was a model that i had worked on if you guys want we can work on it but it will take at least 200 hours if not more for me to be able to build it and i'm not even sure if i'm going to be able to rebuild it exactly the way that it looks and wait let me just zoom out a little so that you guys can see how an analyst model would probably look like and this has got way too many calculations way too many stuff way too many linkages and uh, uh, there were quite a few errors as well like this is error check and it took me ages to be able to the sheet you're not able to see the sheet no sir we can see the excel sheet wait can you see the wait just a second just give me a second i don't know how this stuff works oh window let me know if you guys can uh, look at the model yes sir. yeah so this is a model for a company called iex uh, i don't know if you're aware it's it's indian energy exchange it has given like phenomenal returns like if you if you really like you can just google it uh, iex share price and you can have a look at what it has done and uh, just have a look at this model like it's it's a nightmare model and even i can't rebuild it like if 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 i were to start rebuilding it from scratch it would look different from what it is right now and everything everything here is linked like it's it's all you know formulas and stuff nothing is punched here everything other than those blue ones of course blue ones are assumptions if you look at it this is how a model would you know eventually look like if you get into this particular domain if you uh, are let's say into a investment management firm or let's say into equity research or something like that it it it, it will be a terrible model and it takes ages to build and it takes ages to get this right you know these zeros are very critical these actually mean that you know things are matching and once they do not match trust me it's it's not a good place to be in because it's very difficult to rectify it's easier to rebuild a model than to find out where you are and especially when it is as huge as this one i don't know i mean it it becomes a nightmare if 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 you make any sort of linking error or any sort of you know stupid error so the reason why i'm showing this to you is i could go ahead i could try and build a similar model with you guys and uh, trust me it's not going to help either of us it's going to be painful for me to do it's going to be even more painful for you to uh, look at me do this and uh, at the end of the day you're not going to learn anything out of it so instead of doing this what we are going to do is we are going to rebuild that uh, model which uh, i had created for birla soft but before that i want you guys to be able to understand the company we'll build a rather simple model and uh, in terms of uh, you know let's say your homework the things that you need to do uh, i'm going to post those stuff that you guys are that that i require from you guys to be able to understand the company get a very good hang of what the business is get a very good hang of how they have performed in the past and uh, the resources let me just uh, you guys can see the excel kya you guys can see the excel right yes sir okay thank you so these are the stuff that i want you guys to go back and uh, have a look at for billa soft once you have done that uh, we will uh, you know build the model build the entire model for them from right from scratch right right from pasting each and every line item getting an understanding of what that number represents and then try to get an understanding of you know what sort of assumptions we should be putting in we can always debate that you know i can have the same set of numbers as you guys i could have a buy rating on that company and you could have a sell rating that's because of the assumptions that we guys put in so it's not about model 
it's it's never about the model it's about the understanding behind the model and it's about uh understanding the business and the fundamentals of that company so we can have a detailed discussion i'm going to provide you guys with that uh, research note that i prepared uh go through that go through that that's a very simple uh, research note because that cannot be lengthier than 2 3 pages i i can't like write a 50 page thesis about a company it it doesn't make any sense so can you tell me what's a model like what it presents uh sorry i i i i i lost you i didn't get like what, what... So you're telling like uh, the model what do you mean by a model oh so a model is basically anything that you have done in excel that gives you an output that gives you uh an 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 end result or let's say that helps you in making a decision anything that does that uh is is a model it can like what we did right now that was a model as well assuming that you know that had that been a real company this would have been a model it it is like approach like yeah how you approach about the numbers and how you kind of get an understanding of what's behind what's happening behind the scenes and how you come to the end result that's 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 about it a model is nothing but anything that you have put into excel you can use other softwares as well i'm just saying excel for the sake of it you usually build a model in excel that encompasses the history that encompasses what you think of the projections and that gives you an end result in terms of what you think uh is uh, let's say the right valuation of that company and it just need not be a valuation wala thing it it can be like like i gave an example the last thing that we did uh the company x and company y and then we came across and uh, there was a comparison even that was a model because we modeled two different companies which were similar and tried to understand like what was happening just because they had you know different capital structure and different uh sort of uh, i don't know uh depreciation and amortization and accounting policies so anything that helps you in anal and in analysis on excel is a model even even trust me even this is a model as simple as that any anything that you do that gives you an end result would end up becoming a model it's just that here it's a very simple thing there there would be meticulities and complexities because there will be a lot of linkages and uh, you will have to have those you know particular uh, aspects uh, gotten absolutely right so uh, let me just show you give me one second this is the model that we are going to build first before we move into uh, birla soft so that at least from uh, the perspective of understanding of the company there is no uh, you know mismatch the fundamentals have to be absolutely right and correct before we go ahead and uh, uh, just a second uh, let me know once you guys can see this and i'll 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 be sharing this with you guys today itself not sure where it uh, just give me a second and like uh, before i go there like uh, any one of you know of aswath damodaran have you guys heard of him no one uh, i would really suggest i would really recommend that if you guys want to uh, understand like building model and stuff go to his website there are a lot of interesting models that the guy has uh, uh, you know created and all those models will really uh, you know help you get an understanding like it's not like you can look at a model and then learn how to build a model these are two very different things but at least looking at those you will be able to uh get a better hang of like how to go about building a model
so this is a problem statement that i have created and we will be solving it together uh i'll be giving it to you guys straight away and uh, yeah just go through this you you have all the time on earth feel free to give it a shot uh but yeah of course we are going to be doing this together uh, later on just a few uh you know points that i would like to address whenever we are building a model there are two three things that you should take care of which i did not in the last model that model was a very bad one a model isn't something you are preparing for yourself you are preparing this for your bosses for your seniors who would have a look at it and then you know they are going to make changes here and there and then uh, uh take the final call your assumptions and their assumptions would be very different your assumptions and my assumptions would be very different and like i said with the same set of numbers we can come to totally different conclusions about a company so it becomes very important when you're building a model to make sure that the presentation is absolutely correct so i'll just tell you what i have used here these are just uh, you know few questions let's ignore those so here the first thing is anything which is uh, hard coded uh, hard coded in the sense that anything which is historical and does not change should be in blue like uh these numbers like these are the numbers which have already happened in the past right i cannot change it there's no way that i can say that uh, the company had a different depreciation than what it is showing because that's that's not an option so anything which is uh hard coded or anything which is historical should be uh in in this way it should be in blue and anything let's say it's into 1.05 i'm just putting it here for the sake of it anything which is uh formularized should always be black in nature in in its font like this particular font so that the person who is looking at it knows that okay this particular thing is a historical number this particular thing is a formula i should not touch it ever and these are the places these yellow boxes with blue numbers these are the places where you uh, put in the assumptions so these are the places basically where you know you actually make those changes like this would be this is equal to this multiplied by 1 plus this so if i drag it right it gives me those numbers now if i think if my boss goes around and he thinks hey what is this next year's revenue growth cannot be 5% it's at least going to be 10% and if i put an enter everything changes so the thing is you should understand that the model is not built for you the model is built for someone else and it becomes extremely important to be very precise with the formatting so that the guy who's using it understands like what's what's you know going behind the scenes so i'll be sharing this with you guys you guys go through this you guys have a understanding about what sort of formatting we will be using it need not necessarily be this it's just that you should be able to segregate that's that's the thing i'm just accustomed to uh, using that one in particular now having said that um there was another important aspect just give me a second yeah uh let me tell you what are the stuff that you guys need to go through before the next class just a second yeah this thing is giving me a lot of trouble yeah so for birla soft number 1 you should go through their corporate presentations where will you find it company website slash bsc nsc don't go to nsc nsc sucks bsc is a better better website in in in, in the sense number 2 is you are going to have to look at their historical financials this again as the same uh, source number 3 is research reports this i will give and number 4 is 
highly recommended con calls you will find the transcript on their website so let me just show you guys a few of these just a second basically get what i want you guys to do is get a good hang of the company before we kind of build start building their model it will take some time but do give like a week or so uh, uh i mean i'm giving you ample amount of time to be able to uh, you know get that idea get that hang of everything and post that it will be a much more you know let's say better uh, outcome for both of us because i'll be able to explain things better you will be able to grasp things much more faster so just a second let me just share the tab can you guys see birla so or yeah So just go to the investor relator, investor relation section here you will find whatever you know uh, they have provided basically just a second this is a little from see yeah, here so here you find the annual reports you have quarterly filings and reports here these are the stuff that i want you guys to just you know go through and specifically analyst call transcript this gives you a very good understanding because here the analyst this is basically you know what after every quarter they uh, hold a hold a call like they yeah hold a call with the analyst and they ask a lot of questions like they try to grill them left right and center and from these questions you will be able to get a better understanding because they provide for obvious reasons answers to those from there you can assess you know whether this answers are satisfying whether or not you feel that uh, the company is doing what is right and stuff like that so just uh, go through this you you can see the transcript right or is it something else that you guys are seeing because i don't even know what 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 is being shared no we can see we can see that ha you can see the number right the so dharmendra kapoor he is the ceo of the company recently appointed yes uh yeah and he is answering all these questions so i would strongly strongly recommend that for the last few quarters have a look at their results have a look at the updates that they have provided and uh, for obvious reasons be very very when you are looking at the investor update and everything because for obvious reasons if i am preparing my own uh what do you call it uh presentation i would never put something which is bad like i'll give you a classic example there was this one company i just don't remember the name uh they were bragging about the fact that they have a 70 to 80% market share and uh, like the first line was that there is plenty of room to grow and uh, somewhere down like 5 6 pages line 5 uh, 6 pages down the line they had uh, shown that they have around 70 to 80% market share so if you already have 70 to 80% market share like how how is there plenty of room to grow right okay wait this is this is this is an endless loop all right so yeah those are the things this will be your homework these are the stuff that you guys need to go through and uh, like i don't know how much of it was you know understood but you know to begin with on day one i really didn't want to uh, get into building an excel and get you know you guys clustered and not being able to understand like why or what we are doing so that is where we currently stand and uh, so i will wrap it up in some time is there anything any query any question that you guys have before uh, i kind of you know uh, wrap it up 
it 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 need not necessarily be you know just about what we have learned it can be about what we are going to learn what what else do you expect was i fast was i slow is there anything incremental i could do or any, anything at all which will help you guys and please be very you know uh, fair here because it's it's you guys it's you guys who will be learning i can just come and go i can you know do all this stuff it it's 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 it and, and let's not make it a uh thing where i you know i put in efforts you guys put in effort and nobody's benefited so any any sort of changes that you might want any sort of incremental additions that you think would be helpful any sort of pace changes do you think would be helpful just please please let me know right now or you can let me know over whatsapp whatever you guys are comfortable with and uh, we can address that uh yeah vinay so is it like uh, analysis of the company on the pre uh, results and we are predicting the future in the model like what will be the growth exactly. of the company exactly or... okay i'll i'll show you a model i'll show you a model uh just give me a second and like i'm not from actuarial background so will it be easy for me to understand not easy like will it be able to understand the excel part of the uh like could you tell me a little bit more about what's your background like uh ca student bro you'll be <laughs> you'll be you'll be on top of it you should be i am a ca myself i i expect you to be on top of it it should be easier for you than uh the fellow actual guys and no offense to them as well they'll also do well but you you it it will be easier for you don't worry like any point of time anywhere you have any sort of question any sort of query just uh, let me know and we can sort that out let me just show you guys a model a rather simpler model is what i would say not that simple but uh, still easier than that iex thing that was a nightmare for me so yes just a second i must have some sort of exercise in this and this pc is a nightmare <laughs> so this is another exercise let me just share the screen with you right now so that you understand what we are going to do while building a model let me know if you can see the word of fcf analysis like this current share price uh, we have used and i mean this is a unlevered dcf analysis can you can you can you see it yes sir oh yeah perfect so this is what we actually end up doing these are all the projected numbers projected should not be blue i'm very sorry but uh, just a second so yeah this is what we do these are the numbers historical we we will basically have three statements uh, the pnl cash flow and balance sheet you you guys are all aware of what pnl cash flow and balance sheet is right and you guys have basic understanding of like excel uh, formulas and everything like these two are basics which i am assuming you guys know basis which my next class will be held so if there is any confusion there and if there is any help required there let me know so that i can take that up as well hello <laughs> come on guys if you guys don't know let me know if you guys know let me know but please don't be silent yes sir we know yeah yeah perfect all right great so basically there will be three statements one is income statement which gives you the profits and everything balance sheet of course which gives you the uh you know figures and everything at a particular point in time and cash flow which is very important from where we you know end up getting the dcf analysis done so these 
this is what a typical model would what i mean it would look like there would be linkages there would be you know changes and everything we will have our own set of assumptions on the top basis which we will have a few projections and these projected numbers which you can see here will eventually help us in getting the cash flows once we have the cash flows and we discount those we finally come to like what is the valuation what should ideally be the valuation of that company this is what a dcf model looks like so just to give an example it would be like let's say fcf and how we come to fcf is for later on is let's say my first outlay is minus 2000 and then i get 2500 and then i get 5000 and then i get 8000 and then i get 2000 or let's say 3500 so my irr okay it's too good an irr to be true ah, this looks better so this is this is like the end goal at towards the end it will look something very similar to what you guys have done in cm1 like there is cash outflow there is cash inflows and then basis that you come across what the irr is or what the npv is going to be uh, or what the npv would look like and stuff but prior to that getting these numbers and uh, identifying what this should be and more importantly identifying what the assumptions should be is going to be our uh, key motive behind this exercise because like i mentioned model building is something you can go on youtube trust me you can easily build any model you will get sufficient uh, you know stuff and everything and it's 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 not something uh, incredibly tough any anyone can build a model it's about the you know what's happening at the background understanding that and then you know we'll take a real life case study a real life company which i have told you to analyze once you do that analysis once you have a fair understanding of the company and we can have let's we can even have a debate we can have a heated argument about any sort of assumptions that i have that i'm putting in if i say 10% revenue growth and you have a different view because management has said something else we can always figure it out we can always debate it out and that is where you know the essence of financial model actually lies it's not about yahan pe there's nothing it's just you know the numbers which are linked here and there i mean you just need to link this year one once you have done that it's drag to the right and do control r that's it and i mean that isn't something that i am here to teach i'm here to teach you something different having said that uh, how good are you guys with uh, the formulas and stuff with in in excel like where do you currently stand now i know it's a it's a very difficult question so let me just ask you a question and tell me whether you know do you guys know the difference between sum and subtotal okay this this uh, uh don't don't worry uh, i'll i'll give all that uh, on whatsapp as well that was just you know i just shared it uh, randomly over there uh, i'll i'll provide all those details uh sum and subtotal guys anyone no okay that's a bummer <laughs> okay let me show you a magic in that case and in that case we'll also have to revisit like which formulas we want to uh like i'll i'll have to get a better understanding of what sort of clarity you guys have in terms of formulas and stuff your 5 oh sorry 4 5 let's say i make 100 every time now the difference between sum and subtotal is something you'll get here so this is sum uh, is equal to sum here i mean i've just summed it up now i sum this up if i want to sum it up totally 
Okay. There is double counting, right? But if I were to do subtotal, subtotal has like many uh, things that you can do with. Like you can do subtotal average, you can do subtotal uh, count, subtotal sum, whatever. So nine stands for sum. Subtotal nine comma this. It gives you the sum again. And let's say I copy this. A very interesting thing you should notice right now is that it's catching that 300, but it's still ignoring that. So a subtotal ignores the other subtotals. And if I were to again do a subtotal here, it avoids double counting. This is just one function of subtotal, but there are multiple things that you can do with this. Like, for, for a smaller set, you can find out averages, you can find out counts, you can find out standard deviation. I think you guys know better what is SNP here and uh, variance SNP. So this is just one of the aspects. But uh, what, 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 where do you then stand in terms of formulas? I mean, are you guys okay with IRR, NPV, etc.? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, so I think it should not be that big a problem in that case. I mean, although I expected. And scenario analysis, have you guys done that? Goal seek? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. Okay. Then, 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 okay, then you guys are at a sweet spot. I, I think I just took the wrong example or maybe for some reason you guys didn't know this. But uh, uh, just, just to let you guys know, huh, this is a very classic interview question. Like, what's the difference between sum and subtotal? So that's that was the reason why I thought that you guys might, might be aware. So whenever there's an interview related question from Excel, they would, I mean, it's it's probably one of the first questions <clears throat> to get asked. Now, it's been asked so many times that it's no longer asked. But uh, uh, yeah, that's that's the classic difference. A subtotal ignores the uh, whatever has happened in the past, while sum does not. Some would. If, if I sum and sum it up again and sum it up again, it would double count, triple count, quadruple it, and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's that's where we typically lie right now. I would want to wrap the session. And uh, wait, just give me a second. Huh? I'll just share with you. Let me just uh, put on the group. Just a second. Can we join now? Can we go? So things to go through. OK, I'll, I'll put it on the group. You guys don't have to worry about it. And uh, apart from that, any, any anything else, any feedback, anything, any question before I kind of wrap it up? Nothing, everything's clear. You guys know EV, you guys know EBITDA, you guys know why there is EV to EBITDA, you guys know why there is P to E, you guys know what is FCF, you guys know how to discount, you guys know sum, you guys know subtotal, and you guys know financials, right? A thumbs up would be very great. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks, Vinayak. Understood. All right, so uh, perfect. Great, glad to hear that. And yeah, Vinayak, you said you're a CA student. Uh, which, which, like, IPCC final what? So inter. Uh, okay, inter student. Great. I mean, it's it's a it's a great initiative you have taken. I mean, my inter time, I was like, I I think I could have done more things, but uh, I did not. Great that you are doing it. And uh, trust me, guys, these. Uh, you know, good understanding of financials is more important than financial modeling because like financial modeling is finance at first. So get, get, get that thing clarified first, uh, focus on it. Uh, I'll be sending you guys that Excel. Can I share that Excel, Excel on WhatsApp or any, any other way you guys would prefer? 
because ultimately you guys would need it on your systems right i don't have your email id is whatsapp so uh, whatsapp all right so i'll just i'll just i'll just whatsapp it over there and apart from that the other stuff which i said which you guys need to prepare i'll put it over whatsapp i would really appreciate if you guys can you know provide some sort of uh commentary or some sort of inputs about birla soft any sort of thing that you guys you know could add on uh, on that research report that i had prepared that would be great as well that might have typos as well and huh? i just prepared it on like i i just prepared it randomly in half a day so yeah that's the thing i would really appreciate if you guys can find flaws if you guys can find if you guys can add things on that would be really helpful and uh, yeah look forward to our next session the next session we'll be doing that uh, excel which i'll be sharing so please go through that you guys don't have to do it if you guys don't want to when i want to give it a shot go ahead that i mean nothing like it get you get it wrong no worries you get it right perfect uh when is the next session yeah that's an interesting question uh do you guys need time or should we do it tomorrow see uh, the sessions would be over weekends because weekdays i'm not available uh if you guys want i can give you one week so that you know there are i think quite a few things uh that we have covered today which you guys i mean not covered in terms of a lot of things but it might be new to you so if you guys want let's just take a week off during this week uh get everything you know cleared uh and the next session onwards it will be a little extended session i mean it won't be just one one and a half hour because i can't literally you know just put half model over there and then just leave because that 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 would be a disaster i mean it would be it would be a i mean it it's it's not going to make any sense the next time we start we again are going to have to uh, go from the scratch so the next session would be like 3 4 hour session so come prepared we'll have breaks of course and uh, yeah that's 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 about it if you guys want we can have it over the next saturday and next saturday sunday we can have like 3 4 hour session 3 4 hour session each and uh, post that week i guess uh, will be in a very good shape to be like through with or to be you know significantly through with uh, completion of the rest of model is that is that okay cool all yeah. right all right uh, sounds great uh, and like just just wanted to say it feels very good like i am i i used to teach i have been i am i am doing it after quite a long time so thanks thanks to all of you for joining in and i look forward to seeing you guys over the next weekend as well and any sort of feedback any sort of you know changes that you guys want i am available on whatsapp cool all right thanks thanks to mithi thanks to mida thank you everyone have a nice weekend enjoy your sunday and uh, yeah that's that's it